There we go. Finally got one. Really subtle bite. We get out there deep and on along the bottom. Ooh, it's a nice one too. Really nice fish. Woo! The big boy. Ah, these Lahontan cutthroats are so beautiful. All right, buddy, stay on there. Stay on there. Stay on there. Squirrely, squirrely. There we go. Wow, stunning fish. Look at that, man. Not many places in Washington State you can go and catch 20 inch trout consistently and pretty much have the whole place to yourself. That's awesome. That's a very, very beautiful fish. We're gonna get it on its way. All right, let's get that guy on his way. There he goes. So today I'm at Omac Lake, which has got to be probably one of the top Lahontan cutthroat trout fisheries in the United States. And yet, as usual, I'm pretty much the only person here who has this entire massive lake to myself. And it really begs the question, when you have a lake like this, that's just full of 20 inch plus trout. How come it's not getting more pressured? And I wanted to talk a little bit about that in my video today. Now, I think one of the reasons that this lake has always been a little bit under pressure is just because it's so isolated. It is really not a destination that's on the way to anything else. You really have to be wanting to come up here in north central Washington to target these fish. Oop. That looked like a bite. Um, I came here many, many years ago on my Cascadia big fishing year, and I was trying to catch as many different varieties of, of fish in the northwest as I could in one year, especially for my kayak. And that was one of the first videos that really put me on the map in terms of like educational content. That that video drew a lot of interest and. Ironically, I remember after being, uh, oh, there was a bite right there. After being up here um, and seeing how depopulate the communities were and stuff, I was like, well, it's a very good area to come fishing, but I would never want to live here. And then ironically, like five years later, my, my wife got a job up here. So uh, it's now my home. And yes, it is a, a location that really doesn't draw a lot of tourism. And so, just a lot of people don't end up coming up here in the first place, so it just doesn't get pressured that much. Additionally, it's a really large lake, but uh, it does have the advantage of in the spring, especially starting uh, in a few weeks from now, in mid-April through most of May, uh, these large Lahontan cutthroat trout will come up and uh, shore spawn and they don't have a whole lot of success doing that and nice little tap tap there but it does give anglers the opportunity to target these fish uh, from shore really effectively and it's kind of fun because it's like sight fishing you can literally just watch the big cruisers come by and cast to them and they're pretty aggressive so you can do pretty well. It's popular among fly anglers, just like the Pyramid Lake fishery is. Uh, this time of year when they're spawning down there, we get something similar here in April and May. And that's probably the busiest time that you'll see here on this lake. Is, But even then, you, you'll be surprised to see more than a handful of people on the several public beaches that are available here during that season. There's a big fish right there. Oh, that's such a nice trout. Right there. Followed it all the way in. I think he can still get his attention. That was like an 18 or 19 inch trout. Dang. That would have been a good one to get. And for several years, I actually worked at a local tackle shop, and the Omac Lake Mahatan Cutthroat Trout Fishery was a really big draw for the area. Um, 
sort of started to decline in popularity uh, just before the pandemic. I'm not sure why that is, but then when the pandemic hit, they shut down the reservation to fishing. And you have to have a separate tribal fishing permit to fish here. And at the time it was just $10 a day. I think you could buy an annual pass for somewhere around $80, which is what I did because I, I live right on the edge of the reservation. And it's worth it for me to gain access to all the trout fisheries they have on the res. And the trout fisheries here are managed pretty well. I think the, the tribes do a really good job of managing for a diversity of trout and for really healthy large trout sizes. This is some of the best trout fishing in Washington State is on the Colville Reservation and that includes uh, Lahottans and brook trout and rainbow trout. They, they grow a lot of triploids here too which is a really popular fishery. Uh, but they shut down the res uh, to fishing um, for well over a year, I think almost two full years uh, during the pandemic is purportedly to reduce the number of people coming on the res and reduce the spread of COVID, but at the same time they kept the casino open, so I kind of have my doubts about the <laughs> their actual reasons for shutting off fishing since it's not really something that brings a lot of contact from outsiders with tribal members, but I respect their sovereignty. That's what they decided to do, and that's fine. And in that meantime, ooh, oh, I just got hit right there. But uh, during the meantime, um, I think myself and a lot of other people uh, discovered that there's a lot of other really great Lahontan cutthroat trout fisheries managed by WDFW um, that are doing really well um, and or are recovering. Um, Lenore Lake down in the Dry Falls area was heavily netted out by illegal gill net operations and for a long time was one of the best lahat and cutthroat trout fisheries in washington state uh, but uh, those guys were taking hundreds if not thousands of fish out of there who knows how many fish they took out of that lake and large fish too and the anglers noticed that it really dropped off uh, the quality of that fishery and it seems to be making uh, some strides towards recovery but then, uh, after the reservation opened back up to fishing uh, post-pandemic, the, the tribes decided to institute a $80 reservation use access pass on top of your fishing license. So in order to even just recreate on the reservation, you have to pay $80 and then you got to buy your fishing license on top of that. So even if you're just coming here for a day, uh, and you want to buy a $10 day pass, you still have to buy the access pass. So you're looking at 90 bucks just to come down and beach fish at Omac Lake, which is just crazy. I'm, I'm not sure what the intention of that fee is. Is it ultimately to just drive foreigners, non-tribal members off of the res? Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me, but it's really just dialed back the pressure on the, on the tribal lakes even more. And it's a shame because I feel like there's a lot of great opportunity here. Uh, the communities that surround the reservation and the communities on the reservation itself could really benefit from the limited amount of tourism that we do get. Um, and this is some of the poorest counties in Washington state are here. And it just seems the opposite to me of what they would want to do to encourage people to come here and to spend their money, stay in hotels, eat at restaurants. Um, but I guess that's not ultimately their goal. So that's pretty much been the death nail for this fishery is this uh, $80 reservation use access pass plus fishing license and if you want to launch a boat that's another fee so you know ten dollar launch fee for the day ten dollars to fish per day eighty dollar reservation access pass it's a hundred dollars just to put 
a boat on the water and fish with one rod. And if you want to get a second rod, you're going to have to pay another 12 or 13 bucks. It gets to be pretty spendy um, unless you plan on coming up here frequently and doing a lot of fishing. Of course, another thing that limits activity on this lake is that there is, in fact, no really decent boat ramps anymore. This is the boat ramp right here. This very soft, sandy, gravelly spot here that's got a big like six seven inch drop off that concrete there's been no improvement done on this thing it's just been getting worse over the years when i first came here uh, uh you know 10 15 years ago um they actually did a pretty good job of taking care of this they had even had a dock and everything and nowadays they don't they don't come down and grade this anymore or put any gravel down so it's almost impossible to launch a boat of any size on here and the other launch um, got destroyed by a big flood and then heavy sedimentation made it super shallow so there's really nowhere to launch here anymore and no effort to create opportunity to launch a boat. It's great for people like me in a kayak because I can come down here and basically have this giant lake to myself but almost nobody else is able to take advantage of this fishery in a boat so you've got a lake that's you know seven eight ten miles long that's basically just not getting fish back to spinner to see if i can get something that's what i got my first fish on i had another grab on it i've had a couple of follows and grabs on the spoon but just haven't uh, converted there he is finally kept getting hit in that same area i figured i kept going in there i'd get him Ooh, it's a nice fish. Buck. <laughs> Look at those head shakes. Awesome. Gosh, they're so pretty. Look at that. Ooh. Wow, look at that buck. That is amazing. What a gorgeous fish. Here we go. Look at that beautiful buck. Gorgeous fish. Stunning. The thing about the alkalinity in this lake is it makes the fish so slippy. There they go. <laughs> cool. Well, let's see if there's another one in there. Definitely glad I switched back to the spinner. That seems to be the money today. There we go. Boy, first cast with that spinner. I got one. It's crazy. That is the lure to fish today, I guess. Doesn't feel like a very big one. Yeah, so unfortunately during the pandemic, you know, we saw all these people wanting to go outside and recreate because it was one of the few things we knew were safe to do. And so we saw a lot more pressure on our public waters and public lands and in response a lot of management agencies decided to just increase the price of everything to hopefully reduce the pressure and i don't know to me I, that didn't feel like the right way to to reduce participation is to just make it for people who can afford to i think one of the things i love most about uh fishing is that it's a pursuit that everyone can enjoy no matter uh, you know, poor, rich, or middle class. I feel like it should be accessible to everyone. And just pricing people out of it doesn't really, doesn't make uh, that good a sense to me to just do it in that way. Pretty little hen. Get her going here. Won't even have to net her, hopefully. Okay, sweetie. Come on. Okay. I got you. There she goes. Hey, turn around. Turn around. There you go. See ya. There we go. There we go. Nice. Ooh, it's got some heft to it. 
pressure on them with a barbless hook fishery. Bulldogs, these cutthroats are. Oh, it's a nice fish. Looks like it's gonna be a hen, it's pretty chrome. Really pretty. Oh, calm down. Boy, it's just amazing this fishery. Just every trout is just in that 16 to 20 inch category, and you know there's bigger ones down here because you come down here in the spring and see them swimming along the bank. And they're all in really good condition. Oh yeah, there we go. Gorgeous hen. Of course the hens are really stunning too with the beautiful spotting and blush. Bright golden tails. They carry a lot of girth too. I think I'll make that one my last fish of the day. I just kind of want to take this opportunity to talk about this fishery and how I feel like it is undervalued and it's too bad that it's gotten the way that it has been in terms of access and cost to get into these fisheries. I feel like it's a bit of class warfare or something to just try and eliminate people um, by just driving up the cost of things if they're worried about overpressuring, which is certainly not an issue here. There she goes. Awesome. That's going to do it for me, guys. I'll see you next time. Just remember... Fish smarter, not harder. Bye.